um, yeah. Adam, what are you doing here? What do you want to uh, talk about, man? Yeah, cool. Awesome. Well, uh, I actually slapped together a little demo using uh, P5.js and uh, machine, machine learning library, um, including PoseNet, so that we can uh, kind of estimate some poses and, and do a little, uh, a little haunting. Um, that sounds spooky. Yeah. I think that qualifies. All right, let's 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 check it out. Um, I've got it over here. And uh, chat, I am busting out all the stops. You've got two camera technology going on, chat. <laughs> You're seeing me from two angles. This is... Uh, this is this is I don't know, I just want to I want to point out the production value chat. Look at this, like. <laughs> all right, so I just want to just soak it in. Um, but so I I see got like a webcam feed here. Um, what what should I do now? Yeah, yeah. You know what? Let's let's maybe get you. Well, if you want to go ahead and click, you can do that. Although although I can get you a little more current. URL for this because it's oh, not public. Oh, nice! Um, this is still. Oh wait, wait, wait. Uh, you, you you have a public one now? Yeah. Or if you go ahead and refresh, I think it'll, oh, it'll nice. direct you right to the public one. Uh, Chat's already loving it. So now you can also go ahead with your right hand and click on that icon, or raise your right hand up to it. Wait, what? Oh, uh, your your physical hand. Yeah. Um, it's a little, it's a little touchy because it's right on the edge. There what? You go. So you can, you can now toggle that with your hand. Um, if you take your hand out, you'll, you'll lose the, the cursor there. But, um, yeah, it's be, sitting right it's on the all edge. Good. Uh, it's all good. You, you just added that feature like now. Like yes. Yeah, so, also, what's happening is your face is being confused with your hand, which you know that. Happens, you don't right? know so. how often that happens. <laughs> um. <laughs> I was I was worried you were gonna wear like a hand mask or something, you know. I'm like this is just everything is gonna go this off. Is, the this is the one. Well, I had it on, and then you, yeah, I I took it off just for you. How good is this? <laughs> this is so freaking cool, Adam. You got well, the you got the horse you. that tracks me as I move around, um, and I get to Im finally embody the spirit of a horse. Chat, get used to this because this is how I'm doing all the streams from now on. <laughs> Say bye to this, and now I'm just gonna. Nightmare. <laughs> yeah, it's fantastic. Um, and then the whole hand thing is super cool. That's so, a little, yeah, that's a little, a little touchier because uh, we have easier? to filter out. And, and once we peek into the code, I'll, I'll kind of show you exactly yeah, what's going it. on with the hand. Let's do it. Adam. It troubled. So freaking cool. Um, Chad, if you're not already uh, like following Adam. Also, like I'm, I'm going to be bad about sharing out links today. Um, we've got a whole tweet thread. Go check out those people's Twitter. We're, we're so crunched for time. We have 18 minutes per person. So I'm not going to be able to like share out all the links. So sorry to Adam and the, the rest of the guests for that. But um, <laughs> but yeah. I'll blast it out there. It's, it's good. Awesome. All right. So um, what have you got going on? Yeah. I mean, we'll start from the top, I guess, and just go like again. Just went with Hamel just for brevity, uh, and those are our two or three, four elements rather. Cool. Uh, we, our container is where we're appending uh, the the canvas for um, for the horse there, and then you've got a, a tracking icon for the hand. Cool. Uh, there's a blur. There's a slight backdrop filter being used behind the horse to kind of blur out your I face. I see that. Active. Yeah. Uh, and then we get the toggle switch up in the corner. So. Um, that's the long and short of that. I think the JS is where the real meat is and cool. probably where we'll want to skip to first. Awesome. So up front, you can see we're getting all our variables kind of out of the way. Um, the array that we've got for the head position is uh, is carrying like all the various positions that are going to be delivered through P5 and, and uh, PoseNet. Um, and then everything else is just just related to, to positioning. Um, so... Cool. Uh, if you skip down to our preload, that's where we're getting our model. This was a, a free model, I think, that came from like Turbo Squid or one of those funky. Nice. Uh, yeah, it's pretty solid libraries. Yeah, yeah, it worked out pretty well. Yeah, uh, you'd be surprised how difficult it is to, to source a good horse head. <laughs> <laughs> You're talking to the person that knows better than probably most people. <laughs> Come on, yeah. How long did it take you to find the, just the right one? <laughs> I, I had I had to go make it. That's the thing. Yeah. Oh, no, it's beautiful too, though. I, I, yeah, I, I thought about about grabbing that one from you. But, uh, <laughs> Anytime you want it. Yeah. Um. So so yeah, our preload function is a P5 function that we can use to, you know, like any assets or whatever mm. we can get out of the way ahead of time so that we can be sure that those are loaded before um, our kind of iterative looping starts. Um, then we hop down to setup. 
uh, we can adjust the frame rate and I can get it up to like about 40 on this oh, nice. for a second, but, um, it, it suffers here and there. Uh, most of the time I would just lower the frame rate just for tracking like variable values. Okay. Um, uh, and, and knock it down so that I could console log stuff without breaking anything. <laughs> um, set up our canvas, uh, I'll append it to this parent container. And the reason that I did that, like initially I just had the canvas, like it'll just throw it right in the body element. Right. Um, but the reason I wanted to wrap it up is because the other effect that I'm using on the CSS side of things is uh, the uh, drop shadow filter, which is pretty cool. Um, Oh. It, it's neat because that's what we can kind of get a glow around the horse because it oh, treats that's it sort what's of getting like that. A, yeah. So like if you have like a PNG with a transparency or something like that, or like a, uh, it's, it's a great technique for adding like a shadow to maybe a, a shape that you've used clip path on. Um, if it... you apply drop shadow filter to the parent element, then you get a glow around everything that's basically not transparent. So Got everything it. with, you know, a zero alpha will, will not get it, but, yeah, it's kind of a it, it's it's kind of a cool like underrated feature, um, also somewhat undersupported. But um, awesome, I think we've got it working here. Yeah, seriously. Uh, do our video size, uh, chop that down a little bit, and doubled it for the canvas size so that the horse uh, could exceed the size of that canvas or like the, oh. the boundary of it. So like he'll um, stick out the top and the bottom. Like the, it, is, is yeah, exactly, mean? exactly. Nice. Otherwise, he's confined, cut off, and that's a great touch. Ends, so yeah. And then uh, uh, just setting up our uh, our pose net um, through the the ML five JS library uh, in conjunction with with P five um, for you know just for the rendering. So pose net uh, like is the d uh, face detection software and everything? Yeah, it's it's actually cooked into ML five, which I think was like a Google developed machine learning library. Um, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm not laughing at you. I'm laughing at the fact that when when I agree, a, a big ghost horse off to the my peripheral also <laughs> agrees. We're, we're both just nodding. Mm, yes. <laughs> That's good stuff. That's so good. <laughs> trying to be trying to keep it uh, uh, relevant. Yeah, let's, it. let's be professional. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm nothing if not professional. If yes. Not, right? <laughs> Oh my um, gosh. Yeah. So when the model's ready, then we're just going to toggle a, a class on the body so okay. we can just fade everything in because I don't want to show anybody on any e half rendered canvas or video or whatever. Right. Uh, and then we get down to our body parts function, which is huge in doing the, the main uh. thrust uh, in this pen. So um, splitting up the ears into an array like for left and right. And almost all positioning is done based on the ear positions. In the past, I've used the eyes, but I figured with like the wider um, distance between the two elements, uh, it might get a little bit better precision. My ears um, or the horse ears? Your ears. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. So, so, and, and actually, I, I should have, I should have gotten a link uh, because there's like a really, really basic PoseNet uh, demo that I think Shiftman put together. Nice. Um, that that will just show you dots on each of the key points, um, which is which is pretty cool. So it just gives uh, you an idea of like what's render, re rendering and yeah, where it's finding them. Nice. Um, so uh, to that effect, like with the key points, like you can see, we're looping through our our poses uh, and our pose key points. Uh, so what happens basically is is uh, we get an object back from, from PoseNet and like within that object then are all these assorted poses and their key points. Um, and so each of these key points like corresponds to a different body part. Um, if you're familiar with the order, then you can grab them like by their order value. So you can see the left ear is the third key point. In oh, object. So, so, it's yeah, so it's come back as, as an array, not as an object that you can so like you you have to know the order. It's not like as easy as just being yeah, like, yeah, give me the yeah, left I mean, ear, but you have to say give me the third uh, index. Right. Ultimately, like there is like left ear. You can you can find that like name within the object and then and then associate it with the the key point array or whatever. Oh, okay. Um, so so it's there, but but it's pretty well documented, and you know I've used it enough that I'm kind of just uh, I knew I was only going to use like probably four. So got it. Um, just went with it here. So we've got left ear, right ear, nose, uh, and then your right hand. Uh, nice. 
That's why you and specified then, right hand because you didn't pull off the left hand bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. Yeah, I, I figured let's let's just do one. Let's keep it simple. Yeah. Too much confusion with the face, right? Like which which hand is actually a yeah, face? One of those <laughs> hand looking faces. So it's it's right. you're already up against the challenge. <laughs> so so yeah so every every calculation after that is like based on relative positions between your eyes and your nose. Uh, so your face width is like determined uh, between like the distance between your two ears. So if you were to get closer to your camera, that distance increases and therefore the scale of uh, Mr. Horse uh, increases uh, ever so gradually. Got it. Yeah. Nice. Uh, where, we, where we run into like uh, a little funkier stuff is like determining angles. Um, so we have to, we have to uh, rotate Y, rotate X, um, and then just rotate the, the entire model based on the angle of your head. Is that um, this whole bit? Uh, that's the face width is is dealing with the the, the scaling. Okay. Oh, uh, got it. Okay. So so if you get down to angle, the angle is. Uh, Sorry, I'm skipping. That's all right. The angle will deal with the angle if you tilt your head to one side or the other. Uh, oh, angle right the, here. Cool. Yeah, and then the x and y offsets are are dealing with. Uh, how you angle so it's like if your nose position is closer to your left eye then we know that you're turning your head left and uh, similarly like if your nose position is closer to your right eye then we know you're turning your 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 head right or at least that's the assumption we make unless okay you, so this brings it into like uh two two dimensions essentially and then you're able to see if those points are like like it's not mapping in three dimensions it's it's kind of mapping. exactly yeah yeah it's cool. it's not so we have to like we have to like work with the values that we're given and, and make our best estimation. Yeah, yeah. But, but like, you know, like in some, some, uh, it, it, it sounds like it's not as accurate, <clears throat> but, it, <clears throat> whoops, sorry, that's spooky. Um, but it's, <laughs> but it's easier to work with, it sounds like, rather than doing it in three dimensions. I don't know. Yes. I, yeah. Yeah. yeah I, th I would think so because it's less accurate, yeah, we're, but, we're not but having simpler. to deal with the Z values. Right. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, like what we're doing down here is, is we're not showing that cursor for your right hand unless the, the score is a certain it. amount. So that scoring is kind of a cool, a cool feature too. It's like it, how how accurate is the estimation that that actually is a right hand? So right. if you were to up that score to like you know 0.75, it's a scale, it's a scale from zero to one. Right. If if you scale it higher, then it's it's probably going to have less. Uh, uh, Accurate. Uh, it's not yeah. gonna confuse. It's not gonna show up as yeah, much so. or whatever. Yeah. Yep. So nice. Uh, and then and, if yeah. nose. Oh, yeah, is that so if, that's on your nose score? And is so, that if it doesn't detect a nose? Yeah, exactly. What's so, gonna happen? So, and we've lowered that score, so it's it's like what's gonna happen? No, like nothing. It's gonna stop moving the model around it because it doesn't uh, detect a nose. So. But the model still stay there. Got it. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Cool. And then we're and then we're getting the to, to GSAP like just for, for right, moving right things around right there. Yeah, which yeah. is like is awesome. So we're just adjusting variables with with GSAP's tween and using overwrite to keep it smooth. Um, normally, what happens with PoseNet is it's like really really jumpy. So if you look at like Schiffman's oh, model right. that shows all those key points, they like dance around like crazy. So God, it's very jittery. Yeah, yeah. GSAP does an awesome job of just like smoothing that out. Nice. Uh, you know, at the expense of the slight delay but it's it's worth it yeah but yeah compared to Im immediate jumpiness versus like smooth delay yeah, yeah yeah exactly you accept it take it yeah <laughs> <laughs> it's free right yeah and then we've got a draw loop and this is like a classic p5js like function this this is like just an infinite request animation frame type of loop that's like blessed through uh all these things so God. um one thing that we're doing, yeah, to like to move around not only the blur that's following around your head, the, the backdrop filter, but right. also your hands. Then is just using CSS variables and uh, oh. was, was the draw function. And then, like, really, like the super tricky thing, man. Like, what was so difficult is getting the transform origin right on this horse because the model kind of does what the model wants, right? So uh, the trick to doing that is like calling your translate functions, like twice so like one to like to move it around basically where you want it and one to sort of set like yes that first one is basically like setting our transform origin more or less like okay it is it is it is translating the model but it also like oh, sort of like one. pins an origin for us so it helps uh 
it, it, it's very much like uh, the order in which these things are processed, like will will kind of de determine like transform origin. So I like to like SVG and the troubles that we run into transforming those. So <clears throat> man, uh, gotta oh, say spooky, spooky stuff. That's really, really some spooky <laughs> stuff. It is so freaking cool chat. Um, I think, I think it is public now. I'm dropping it in on you. Um, right there check it out yourselves uh adam uh, thank you so much for coming through thank you so much uh i i, I hope you feel better about yourself and <laughs> you know say i i am a ghoul i'm worthy of love just because i'm dead and i'm haunting this house doesn't mean i'm not deserving of love um i'm a I'm working on it. <laughs> <laughs> and take that from progress. me, a cowboy, and me, a horse, <laughs> that also agrees. <laughs> <laughs> this is the closest thing I had to a Carl Havoc mask, right? So. <laughs> <laughs> to the chat. We've, we've definitely got some, um, some. I think you should leave fans in chat. Uh, Adam originally wanted to come as Carl Havoc, so... Uh, <laughs> but uh, um, it's a difficult mask to pin down it's, it's tough you, you it's tough so. to pull off yeah they're not just hanging on the shelves you know very Dude, complicated <laughs> thank you so much for coming through really appreciate always always love seeing you getting to talk with you and getting to see um just another awesome uh adam kuhn creation thank you man <laughs> hey thanks a lot man thanks hey happy halloween me. thanks for coming through you. All right, see you later chat say thank you and happy halloween you.